Hello guys, it's Ryan here with Hobbies and Man. Once again, and today we're going to be doing another comic book review. Today we're going to be looking at Gun Honey, uh, issues one through four, which covers the first Gun Honey series. I think this is from 2021, if I remember correctly. Here's issue number one. This is uh, cover A. Issue number two, this would be cover A as well. This is cover A for issue number three. This is probably the best cover out of the four that I have. And this one is cover A as well for uh, issue four. And this is a uh, hard case crime uh, comic book. Uh, it's by Titan. And uh, it's written by Charles Ardai, who is one of the people that helped launch hard case crime as far as I understand it. And it's drawn by Ang Hor Kang, who is a recently discovered artist, uh, who I think this is the, his de debut title work. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Like I said, it is uh, published by Titan right there. But it is actually a hard case crime book, as you guys can see up there. And um, the demographic for this is mature or adult, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of TNA in this. So um, if you're younger than 18, please don't check this out on my account. Uh, um, you know, do it on your own if your parents let you. But <laughs> don't blame me. Uh, it's not my fault. Uh, in terms of a genre here, we have action, thriller, crime. This is basically like, what if the James Bond girl or the Bond girl was actually the action hero? And it works really, really well. A lot of it also reminds me a lot of Catwoman uh, or more like what you thought Black Widow was if you only knew her from the MCU. Uh, because she has that kind of like, seductress femme fatale type vibe to her but it never actually goes there because you can't have that in a all ages movie um but this kind of delivers on that sort of thing it does not have adaptation but in the second story uh the back uh, matter actually talks about how they got a tv show license for this and they're actually going to be working on creating it so there will eventually be a tv show about gun honey who knows when it'll be and honestly it probably won't be near as raunchy as this um wants to be right so yeah and in terms of a rating this is a 4.5 out of 5 because i think that charles arday sometimes uh writes something that makes sense to him but he's not that good at explaining it and so there's usually very small but kind of key moments of characterization that are unclear and so that's why it's a 4.5 out of 5 overall i did really enjoy this though this is my third time reading this and I love it. It's very, very good. And the premise here is that there's this woman called Joanna Tan, which you can see right there. And she is the gun honey. She is half Malaysian, half American, as far, as, far as I remember correctly. And she lived in Singapore with her father and her four brothers. Uh, her mother died giving birth to her. And uh, her abilities are that no matter what the situation is, she can find a way to get you a gun wherever you need it. And so she is a very well-known uh, criminal in the kind of underground. Uh, and she ends up giving a gun to someone that then starts unraveling an old issue from her life before she became the gun honey. And so it's a very good story. And we get to see her, one, telling us her backstory, but also, you know, moving forward and kind of developing this, this, this current story that she's in. And it's very, very good. I quite like this. It's very, very enjoyable, but it also has a lot of raunchy stuff in it. So if you're not really interested in that type of stuff, uh, this is not gonna be for you. So the plot line here opens up with this dude on a yacht and he's this rich dude. He seems to be living on this yacht because he wants to stay away from, you know, any sort of uh, government uh, situation. And he's looking through binoculars. He's looking at the beach. He finds a woman he really likes, and it turns out to be Joanna. So uh, he asks his lackeys to go get her, to bring her into the yacht. She comes on, she gives a gun to someone, or she puts a gun in a certain place, and eventually this gun is used to assassinate this guy. And so that is our inciting incident that is mostly just to introduce us to the character of Joanna Tan, the gun honey. And it's a very good sequence, I quite like it. And the way it's drawn is really, really good. Then she goes home, she gets found by this dude called Baru, who's actually, uh, his name is actually Brooke Baru, Baru, and he is a CIA, FBI, Homeland Security type guy, and he is the agent in charge of tr tracking her down, but also getting her to uh, her uh, his boss, who is called the Burrow Bitch, but actually is named 
uh, Lydia Morse, even though we don't really learn that until the second uh, story, because for the first story, it is mostly about code names and stuff like that, right? So, um, yeah. They basically try to recruit her to work for the US government, but she doesn't really want to because it, you know, it, it makes no difference who she works for. She's still doing what she's doing. The US government's still gonna um, pay her, but uh, she doesn't really want to be tied down to the US government because she has an issue with them, uh, which gets revealed later on. Uh, and uh, so there's, there's a big meaningful bit of a uh, backstory there about who Joanna is, where she comes from, who raised her and stuff like that. And then the recruitment doesn't really go as planned uh, because she doesn't want to work for them, right? So uh, we move on. Joanna has a new job. Uh, she goes in, she finds it, she puts the gun in the right place, and then she gets caught, which actually is a trap because the guy that hired her wants to talk to her directly. And so they do. And it turns out this guy wants her to put a gun in a prison in order to, to have someone that he wants to kill use it to escape. And this is the part that makes it a 4.5 out of 5 instead of a 5. Because when you're reading this, you don't really get that off the bat. You don't understand that this is happening until you read, read it a few times in order to understand it. At least it, it happened with me, where initially I didn't understand what was going on. Even the second time I read it, I didn't understand. I had to go back and read it again in order to really understand what was happening. And it's that this guy, Ugras, hires her. And he's like, I want you to put this gun here in this place. The point of that gun is that she's going to give it to someone uh, who is someone that Ugras wants to kill, but he can't kill him while, he, while he's in prison, so he needs him to come out. The thing is that when Ugras gets this guy his gun, this guy escapes, but also t tracks down Ugras and kills him because this guy is much better at doing what he does than Ugras ever was. And so this leads to this small game war where Ugras and all the people that he's associated with uh, in the US die. And then uh, the Burrow bitch or, you know, Barrow's uh, boss, uh, the Lady Morse, uh, calls Joanna back in. She gets mad at her. Joanna's like, dude, I don't work for you. What's going on? Relax. It's not that big a deal. And uh, then uh, Joanna tracks down the guy that she freed by accident by giving him his gun and it turns out that it's her brother and so we get this twist ending here where we learn uh more backstory we learn how she lost her family we learn why she turned into the gun honey and then she reunites with a, with her family member they do something and then there's another big twist here at the end that was quite good i quite liked it it ends up with lydia morse dying and uh joanna and uh, brooke uh, going off into the sunset, which then sets up the second story. There's also this part that I uh, didn't really talk about because it's mostly for fan service or for, uh, you know, titillating content for raunchy moments when she's trying to get into the into the prison. And I think that it um, it, uh, it it's really good. I quite like that sequence, but it is one that I think a lot of people that are maybe not the intended audience, as in uh, heterosexual men, uh, will find to be a little bit objectionable or maybe they'll feel like it's good representation. It really depends. I don't know, but it really worked for me. I really enjoyed that aspect and uh, I really like the whole story quite a lot. So yeah, the tri twist ending there uh, is very good and it sets up the second story quite well and I quite like that. I think it works really, really nicely. And uh, then it ends in this kind of uh, James Bondian type fashion by saying Joanna Tan, the gun honey, will return in another story. And it works really well. I quite like that. Some of the characters here, we get Joanna Tan, we get Brooke Barrow, uh, we get the Burrow bitch, aka Lydia Morse, we get Jack, Fiona, and Ugras. And um, very good stuff. I also didn't really go over all of the plot points, so there's still stuff that you can uh, figure out for yourself. But overall, very good stuff. Uh, in terms of world building, there is none in the sense that this is not a fantasy world. Everything that happens here is setting building. There is no world building in the sense that there's no clandestine operations. There's no groups of people that we don't know that are fictional. There's nothing like that. This isn't a, um, this isn't that type of thing. It, the, the, the people that, you know, exist in this world are all technically real or like work under real government agencies and stuff like that. As far as I understand it. Um, and so everything that happens here is only set in building. It's only about developing the situations uh, into a kind of believable, but maybe not real setting, right? So, uh, you know, 
take that how you will. In terms of artwork and fan service, the artwork is amazing. It's very, very good. It has this kind of uh, Buscema, Frazetta type look to it. Uh, but it also has a very modern coloring to it. Um, and it works really, really nicely. I like the faces quite a bit. I like the distinct female shapes. I like how the male characters are all very different looking as well. Overall, I really, really like this. And I really hope that Angkor Kang sticks to Gun Honey for as long as Gun Honey is written, but also branches out and does some other stuff for Image or maybe for some of the superhero comics um, in terms of like, uh, you know, splash pages or in terms of um, just doing covers for them because his art style, his, his, his way of, of drawing female characters is very, very good. And I would really like to see, you know, Wonder Woman or Power Girl or Lois Lane in these kind of style, in this kind of style that Angkor Kang has. So um, yeah, uh, lots of cheesecake though. If you're not a fan of that, don't read this. This is not for you. And ratings wise, a 4.5 out of 5 because the Ugras gun thing is a bit confusing. Uh, initially, it takes a while to read it uh, and to reread it in order for you to understand it. But once you do, I think you do get what's going on. It just takes a little bit of time. And I think this is maybe because Charles R. Day is more of a novel writer. And then switching over to comic books, it makes some situations kind of uh, not work that well. Also, I really wish this was a little bit longer than four issues. I think that the story was told perfectly in the four issues, but I think a little bit more time to breathe and to have more scenes where you develop Brooke and uh, Joanna's relationship would have been really, really good. Um, but it kind of depends on, on on how that kind of works, right? So maybe these things are things that Charles R. Day has already written and things that just like didn't work for the pacing of the story. And so it's understandable they wouldn't be there, but hopefully we can get some kind of uh, other moments where they do have situations where they're just kind of hanging out together because I would really like to see those. So. There you go. That's uh, my thoughts on Gun Honey 1 through 4 of the original series. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know your thought. And let me know if you guys are interested in checking it out down below. Thank you guys very much for watching. And see you guys later.